With Jesus, you don't need to do anything or go outside of yourself to access God. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Raised and Redeemed podcast and YouTube channel. I'm your host, Michaela Nikolenko, and I started this show after finally finding my home in Christ. I grew up in a home with lots of abuse and addiction where Christianity became something that repelled me. I spent my early adulthood seeking God in other religions, tarot cards, psychedelics, and even myself. I didn't realize how much hell I had pulled up into my life until I came face to face with the dark side of the spirit world and Jesus fought hard to save me. Now I live to serve his will and host a platform where others can share their story too. If you're looking for a show that talks about real things and provides encouragement for those who have been to the dark side and back, this is the show for you. Make sure to rate, subscribe, and share this show with anyone that you feel might be encouraged by it too. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Raised and Redeemed family. Hey you guys, what is up? I'm your host, Michaela Nikolenko. Today, I'm writing solo. Um, I'm still coming to you from Zoom instead of my iPhone because this is what I'm comfortable doing. So if you're watching from YouTube, you see me here in my little fake studio by myself today. Um, and today, I'm going to be talking about psychedelics and how they open portals to demons. Once again, if you're watching the video, you will see me looking down um, because I have some notes here. This is a message I take so seriously and I've been thinking so much about it. And um, yeah, I just feel this urge to get on here and share this video. So if you're here, I'm sure it's for a reason. Um, I'm sure God brought you here to hear this message today. So thank you for thank you for being here. Um, and yeah, just supporting my channel. If, if you are here and you are an existing uh, subscriber or follower. So I'm going to get right into this and just let you know that I'm not coming to you from some kind of religious or self-righteous place about this, um, but a place of experience. After what I've seen, I can't not warn people, especially because I know when I was using psychedelics, I genuinely believed that they were good and that they were leading me to God. I even so much as wrote a paper in college um, about psychedelic assisted therapy. Like I was all in on this stuff. After having spent a little over two years in the new age, I realized the reason most people do psychedelics is because they're seeking healing, truth, expanded consciousness, and access to the divine. I'm using more like new age verbiage here. So that's not my current verbiage, but that was my verbiage when I was when I was in that world. Um, and they're seeking that intercessor and don't realize the only safe and true intercessor to God is Jesus Christ. They don't realize that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light and lures you in with these kind of portal openers. With Jesus, you don't need to do anything or go outside of yourself to access God. God is right there. Like when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is with you. You have direct access to God that you don't have to pay for. You don't have to trip for. You don't need to go get some sort of like Reiki or, you know, healing, ayahuasca, any of these like experiences. You don't have to do that to access God. But when you are doing these practices, you're accessing something. This is an intercessor into the spirit world, but it is not God. It is not the Holy Spirit that you're accessing. You're accessing the demonic realm. But I know that's not the message that's being given by the media, by popular culture. The main message about psychedelics right now is that they are mind expanding and healing and all of these things. Um, but the Greek root words literally mean mind manifesting. I know now, you know, obviously in the new age world, manifesting has a slightly different meaning. It's like bringing, it's like you trying to be your own God and bring what you want into fruition with like intentions and affirmations and stuff like this. Um, but now that I'm saved and in the Christian world, the meaning of manifesting um, in these terms, it's often used to describe when demons make an appearance. And I know that from personal experience, though, that's not how my use of psychedelics started. That's what I eventually realized it was. So this is for my people that tell me psychedelics have only been a beautiful experience for them and they've never encountered anything demonic. 
that's how it started for me too. In fact, like I said, I even thought that I was experiencing God. There's a clear example in my life of I was with all my friends um, when, you know, this is my kind of like yogi friends when I lived in Arizona and we would do psychedelics together. And there was this day that we were at this creek, uh, probably in Sedona or something. And I felt like when I was in the water that I was contacting some kind of like water goddess. And I remember sitting in this creek and my friends were all around me. And I remember like telling them these things about their future or about their healing. And like everybody was looking at me with like tears in their eyes, like what I was saying was what their soul like knew or like needed to hear. And I remember this was my one of my first experiences of thinking that like I'm genuinely accessing God on psychedelics and God is coming through me and I'm helping people heal and understand things about themselves and about and about God. And to make matters even even worse, really, is my friend had taken a picture of me in this moment while I was in the creek talking to everybody. And I saw the picture the next day and I'm literally like sitting there in this water, like some kind of like monk um, with my hands in prayer position. And everybody's like sitting in front of me, looking at me. And there's this beam of light coming from the sky through me. And so it just like confirmed this belief in me that like, okay, I have, there's something I'm accessing and it's helping people. And I need to, I need to keep doing this. This is a part of my purpose. But looking back on this day, this experience with psychedelics, this is a part of the story that I actually, you know, numbed out slash like disregarded is it was a very like torturing day too. Um, So I had been engaged to somebody before this engagement. Um, This fell through. I didn't end up with this man, Um, but I was engaged to somebody who was here and he was all into one of my friends. And I remember having this experience um, where I felt like I was like passing the crown. I was passing the crown to her. And I remember telling myself like this pain that I'm feeling is okay because it's I'm sacrificing myself for her healing, um, for her to feel seen within masculine eyes and for her confidence and for her stepping into her inner goddess, like he's seeing the goddess in her and like, that's good and that's okay. And it doesn't matter that you know, I'm over here, like in this agony. Um, I literally felt like I was like an old, an old queen, like dying or something. Um, So this was the kind of rationale that I had at the time was this pain that I felt this torture that I felt was, was okay, because it was a part of, you know, our ever, our evolution, my healing, her healing, yada, yada. So I got to using psychedelics really casually with my roommates, with random people doing yoga at the park. Um, And I started getting visuals of what my life would be. I saw that I would be wealthy and beautiful and that I would heal people. And at this time, my overall lifestyle had led me back to the strip club, too. I noticed all the men in this place were extremely broken and seeking some kind of encounter of love um, given in a very perverted and delusional way. And I believed I was there to help heal them with my body by teaching them about astrology, which I believed at that time to just be advanced psychology. Really, I was very clearly delusional too. Um, This stuff all goes hand in hand though, because I was also the dancer in the locker room, bringing my tarot cards and trying to get deep and help the other dancers heal too. It was just such a broken place. And I believed that I had the answers. But these teachings were straight out of the pit of hell. I was literally in Satan's playground, like like the strip club. I was literally in his his playground and I didn't realize it. Um, And I really did think that I was like I was healing myself. I was evolving myself because it's not just psychedelics. Like like when you're using psychedelics, chances are you like it comes with a community. It comes with an ideology. It really comes with its own kind of. like theology of like the world and how things operate and and just this overall environment like it becomes it becomes overall who you are so I thought like 
I'm healing, I'm evolving, I'm stepping into my feminine, I'm at this club, these people need healing, this healing is going to come through my body, I believed in like this energy in my body, the chakras, when you dance with people, you breathe with people, you're lifting the chakras, just all these demonic teachings that really were at the sacrifice of myself, my soul, my body, my heart, um, and I, I didn't realize that. Um, so this engagement that I was in obviously fell apart and I ended up moving into my own apartment for the first time ever. I was really stressed and wanted to know how I could be happy here uh, because I lived in a house. It was a big, pretty house. I had all these roommates um, and I had my ex, my ex fiance. And so this is my first time like living completely by myself, no roommates. Um, and I was going through a big life transition to of leaving this engagement um, and at that time, I was involved in a new relationship with a man that was actually married. Um, and so I was really stressed out at this time. I had all sorts of things going on. I had men from the club um, that were involved in my life and just overall like a hellish, very destructive, demonic lifestyle that I had going on. And I wanted to know as I was moving into this new apartment, how I could be happy here. So I was like, how can I be happy in this new apartment? Like, what is my purpose in life? Why am I like, what does this transition mean? Like, who am I? I just had these like big, deep existential questions. And it was just me and my dog. Um, and I remember I decided to do shrooms by myself. And this was also my first time doing it by myself. This was the first time I became aware, not exactly of my demonic possession, but at least the more scary experiences that can be had on shrooms because up until this point I'd used them for years and nothing scary had ever happened to me. Um, but this was the first time something did. So I started off in the park uh, watching the, the trees breathe and all these other sort of things that you see. If you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I got to feeling a little bit anxious, feeling like I was about to be weird um, in public. So I went home and I crashed on my bed. And I remember I had this, I had this dresser, this like old white refurbished European looking dresser that had all these like curly designs. And I'm laying on my bed, staring at this dresser. And when I closed my eyes, I remember seeing like this alien spaceship with like, I don't know if you could see the video, it like looked like this coming at me um, where like, imagine like your fingers, if you're not, if you're listening on the podcast, like like all these like tentacles, like directly zooming at you. And I remember feeling a lot of fear and I was really afraid of what was happening. But at this time I was really obsessed with aliens. Like I was reading about aliens. I wanted to see aliens. I was posting about aliens. I thought I was an alien. I thought maybe at this time I was so deceived. I was so confused. I thought maybe even, you know, aliens were, were gods that came here and bred with monkeys and humans were descendants of this this hybrid sort of species like guys I was I was out there okay so I wanted to encounter the aliens this is something I was really excited about as much as I felt fear when I saw them coming towards me I was more curious than I was afraid which was one of my biggest pitfalls is my curiosity like curiosity really can kill the cat um so at this time I'm laying in my bed and this experience with God, I never reflected on until years later when I was saved and I realized he was there. But I remember literally God, the father standing behind me. And at this point, I like didn't believe in him. I didn't want him. Um, but there was like this translucent layer between me and him, like almost like a, a screen or like I was in a lab or something. I felt like I was in a lab and he was behind. And I remember him telling me that I didn't have to go in there. That's all I really felt like he was saying is you don't have to do this. Like you don't have to go in there. And I remember my response to him was no, like I need to know if there's a great mother. I need to know about the aliens. And he was gone. And next thing I know, it's like this full on, like I'm freaking out. So, you know, we have free will. I don't believe he ever left me, but I do believe he allowed this to happen because I, I chose for this to happen and I needed to see so that I could now be here and tell you guys and tell the world. So I end up feeling so terrible, so anxious. Like I am freaking out at this point. 
So I think about what what makes me feel better. And that's generally water. So I go back to the story of, you know, me sitting in the creek. Whenever I did shrooms at my old house, I would sit in the bath and I would laugh and play and splash. And I really had these like demonic, um, like siren. I don't know if you know, like the demonic mermaid, like I had these siren, like luring, like melodies coming out for me. And like my roommates would almost just be like drawn into the room. And I'm like, I can't really explain it. I had this very, uh, I don't know, like, I feel like I was connected to like deep, dark water, demonic kind of spirits. So I go into the shower and I remember I'm standing there and just trying to feel some kind of relief, feel some kind of like goodness, some kind of peace. Um, And around me, I begin to see all these alienoid beings. And I'm like, okay, so they're here now. They're at my house. And we're just kind of like telepathically talking back and forth to each other. And I told them that they were scaring me. I was like, you're very scary to me right now. If you want me to be receptive to what you're saying, you're going to have to like make me feel not intimidated. So just then they ended up like, I I see this, um, this girl and I'm kind of, I'm looking at my shower. It's like a vision. Like I'm seeing this vision. It's in my head, but it's not at the same time. Like, like I'm seeing this in my shower curtain. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but I'm seeing this in my shower curtain. Um, I had this like marble pattern shower curtain and I see this girl begin to form and she's like super sexy. She has these like cat ears and this tail and, and she's just like purring and dancing and, and playing and just like, you know, all about being sexy. And they were telling me that that was me, that I was supposed to be her. And I really felt like that was true. And I believe that about myself too. Like once again, I'm dancing at a club at this point. So I started getting messages about who I was and what my purpose was on this day. You know, they told me that I was going to be paid to exist and I wasn't going to have to worry about money the way that I always had, that that people were going to watch me. I felt like people were going to watch me. Um online, which is crazy because now here I am, I have this platform, I have this this channel because God redeemed it, but Satan tried to hijack it and he told me it was going to be for a whole other thing. And that was to sell myself. And so I get out of the shower and like, I'm still bugging, like I'm still kind of like freaking out. And I remember like going to my dog for comfort and I looked at my dog and he's like trembling, like bless his heart, like I honestly, I got so emotional in the car the other day because I'm driving and he's with me. Oh, look, I just love my dog so much. And he's, I've got the windows down in the back and he's breathing out the window and just like living his best life here in Florida now. And I just think about everything that he went through with me. And, and like, I take my role as his mom very seriously. And I'm like, oh my God, like, praise God that you get to live this normal stable, beautiful, peaceful life now, because that's not what I put him through the first few years of his life. Um, so I'm looking at my dog while I'm, while I'm, you know, tripping really bad demonic, uh, possess, like I was possessed at this point and I could see it in his eyes because he's looking at me and he was trembling in fear. Like, that's not how my dog looks at me. It wasn't me that he was seeing. He saw what was in me. Um, and I ended up FaceTiming one of my friends at this point. And I I remember telling her and she was with one of my other friends. I told her like what my plan was and what I was going to do. And I'm like spinning on my pole because I had a pole in my house at this point. And she ended up stopping my friend after that because, well, we came into the new age together. We ended up both being saved later, but she just knew at that point, like I was in a really dark place and she didn't want to be around it. So I had lost like the closest people to me. Um, I was freaking everybody out. I had left my engagement. And while he wasn't like a godly man or like we weren't the best influence for each other, like he did care for me and about me. And like I now had I now had nobody besides for guys from the club, random people from the club and this married man that I was also in a relationship with. So at this time, I remember equating this to, this is like what new age people believe. If you have a bad trip, oh, well, it was just the place. Like, that's what I was processing through at the time. It was like, that's where my consciousness was. Um, so of course I had a bad trip. I encountered dark things. They're, they don't see it as what it is. They don't see it as demonic 
um, possession. They see it as, you know, just a bad trip. And it was because of my own internal state of being. Um, so that's really how I saw it at the time. And I didn't think that I had opened portals to anything yet. So then this leads me into the next experience. I'm really just going to tell you guys like, um, yeah, just my shrooms experiences uh, after this point too. So the next psychedelic experience I had, I was with a group of friends. I had a friend visiting me um, from Indiana and she wanted to she wanted to experience all this stuff that I'm talking about on social media. And so I ended up leading her on a trip. And I didn't really like want to this day, but I remember feeling like, okay, like for the greater good of all, like I'm going to do it. Um, and so we end up getting psychedelics. It was always shrooms, like shrooms were my thing of choice. And me and this group of like somewhat friends, like kind of acquaintances, just in like the community I was in, we, we go to this pond down the road from where I lived and everything was fine. But then this quiet guy um, that was in our group started getting really vocal about his feelings. So he had been going through like a breakup and it was really like, I don't know, he never expressed himself. They never like communicated or talked about it, but he started getting really vocal. And like, now he's like, he's standing up, he's looking out at the waters and he's just like processing this. And like, I can tell he's getting in a really dark place. Um, so he ended up asking me if I would lead him through some, some breathing uh, practices because he knew he needed to calm down. So he lays down on this dock and you guys, it's like, it's like midnight, one in the morning now at this point, just like utter chaos. Um, and so I sit there, I'm like in my yogi position. Like I teach yoga at this point. I was really in the new age world. Um, so I was, yeah, the whole yoga breathwork practitioner. So I sit down and I'm leading him through, through these breaths I'm leading him through these breaths. And I think he's, I think he's starting to calm down as he's laying there. I began to see visions of the depths of the ocean. So all around me, I'm like feeling like we're in the pit of the ocean. And I'm seeing these like skeletons and, and just this like deep, dark pit. And I'm feeling like this dark, like sea urchin kind of vibe. So this man, when he sits up, his face had taken on a whole other form. His face is twitching. His jaw is like snaggling left and right. His eyes are bugged. And I could tell that he was overtaken by some kind of deep ocean kind of spirit. I don't I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was it was dark and it was freaking me out. What's weird about it though is it didn't feel it didn't feel evil. Like I wasn't afraid of it, but I was like, okay, this is this is creepy. Like I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to deal with that. I have my friend here. Like she doesn't know how to process this. Um, so we ended up going home at this point and his friend took him home. Um, but as we're walking home, so now it's like two in the morning, people are crying in the parking lot. This guy's freaking out. His girlfriend shows up like everybody, like, it's just, like I said, just utter chaos and destruction. Like that's the point, right? This, I don't know, demons just come with this destruction and this, this chaos so um, we're walking across the street and my dog, just to, to top it all off, stops and goes to like poop in the middle of the road while this semi is coming. And I'm like, what is happening? Like we, we make it across the road. I pull him. My friend is like, oh my gosh, like what is this chaos? And at this point, like I began to think like, what the heck is my life? Like I'm like here, a grown adult. I think I was like, I don't know, 20, 22, maybe maybe 21, 22, grown adult. And here I am, it's two in the morning, all this chaos is happening. I just saw a demon, I almost got hit by a semi. My dog doesn't know where he's supposed to use the bathroom, just this utter chaos, okay? Hey you guys, if you're in a relationship and trying to figure out if he's the one, or maybe you're recently single and taking a step back to figure out how to best go about finding the one, I have the ebook for you. Head over to the link in my bio or in the comment section from wherever you're listening to find my latest ebook, How to Know If He's the One. In this ebook, I share the worst of my relational mistakes and how Jesus finally showed me there was a better way. Gradually, he began to mend my heart, and I know he will do the same for you too. But I didn't stop there. I continued on and once again, going back to the relationship I was in with this married man, he lived a state away. So he would come and visit me every other weekend. Um, I believed it was, you know, I believe that they were separated. That's what he told me. But 
I deep down in my heart, I knew like he was still living there. I should have known better, but I didn't. I was all about myself. Like when you're not living for Christ, the Holy Spirit isn't in you. It's like, it's, it's especially with this new age belief system, it's all about self gratifying self. And especially when you uh, grow up in an abused, traumatic, powerless situation, like you go into this, this movement of like, wanting to take your power back. Like I was somebody I was at all the like goddess rising marches. And, you know, I probably if I was still in this belief system, I would have been one marching with BLM and all these other like, intense movements that are about self and gratifying self and taking your power back and proving it to everybody. And so that's where I was at this point was ultimate self gratification. So this relationship just really went against everything that was of good and of God. Um, But, you know, the tarot cards and everything was telling us that we were supposed to be together. So that's who I looked to as my God. And so that's what I that's what I followed. Um, And I ended up talking him into doing shrooms with me, too, because I wanted this like deep, intimate, like spiritual experience with him. And he had never done it before, but he agreed to do it with me. And um, this was when I saw the jester demons. So if you've seen my other videos about the demons I've seen, these demons were like they had these curly horns. Um, these long, long tongues, they were very colorful, like almost like neon. And they were just like laughing and playing and like wanting to be amused and entertained. And I remember like seeing them in a vision, like inside, inside myself, because we had turned the lights off, it was pitch black. So I saw them like inside myself, I knew they were in the room. They were all about, you know, the sexual energy and and the laughing and the playing and the singing. Like they they were loving it. They were loving the chaos. They were loving the sin. Um, and I remember like I wasn't freaked out by them. I just kind of thought they were like weird spirits in the room. Like, I don't know. Like, I guess like I was having fun with them too at this point. I just my eyes were not open to seeing that this was this was evil and this was of of Satan's kingdom at this point. But later on this guy ended up telling me that he was actually afraid that night. And he thought that not that I was like literally going to eat him, but like, yeah, like he felt the darkness. Um, and he, he voiced that to me later. This was the relationship that I actually came to know the Lord in, where I ended up seeing a demon while I was completely sober. So yes, like I had all these psychedelic experiences. Um, and I was used to seeing things while under the influence but what really changed everything for me was when i saw a demon while i was completely sober this humbled me and this is what brought me to the foot of the cross but that's not the point of this video but it kind of is too because you know i'd opened so many portals i'd opened so many portals of all these practices of the psychedelics the witchcraft um the tarot cards the psychics like i had just opened so many portals that it led to this ultimate big bang of this encounter with this demon and that's where Jesus saved me. Um, But something that I realized uh, before seeing the big demon is that not all demons are necessarily scary, but they're unclean, chaotic spirits looking for a way in. And we give them that with psychedelics. We give them a way in. We open a portal to ourselves, to our minds, to our temples when we make that legal contract with the devil by eating off his table, psychedelics. So this is why God tells us to be alert and of sober mind, not to control us, but to protect us. When we take a substance, we step out into the universe uncovered and unprotected. And we, like I said, we've eaten off the devil's plate and given him these legal rights to enter. When we leave our body to go off into another dimension or realm, we've left it vacant for something else to enter. I urge you because my life got so chaotic, so messy, so painful. I was hurting myself. I was hurting everybody involved. Um, I've repented for this. Like I went through a lot of deliverance over this. I, I made amends. I called. I apologized to people that were involved. I like I've literally cried so many tears over this. I've repented and now there's there's no condemnation in Christ. Once you give your life to Christ, he makes you anew. You are a new you are a new creation in his eyes. So that's that's okay, but like looking back, like I said, it was just so painful when I was letting demons run my life. 
They were telling me lies about who I was, what my purpose was, who I should be with, the things I should teach people. And it was just destruction. I don't know exactly why. I know they feed on fear and rebellion and chaos and just everything that isn't of God. So just to you know summarize this video, guys, I tell you my story so you can see just by personal example, like I'm like I said, I'm not coming from some kind of religious place, but I know I know what I saw, and it wasn't just a state of mind. Like I had somebody on my TikTok ask me if I grew up going to church um, because they they thought, you know, if I grew up believing that, you know, Jesus was God and Satan was real and all these things, that I would have these kind of bad trips if I do psychedelics under that belief system. But that's the thing is I wasn't under this belief system when I was doing it. I I didn't grow up, grow up in church. Like I went a couple of times with my dad here and there. And like, I knew about Jesus, um, but I didn't really like, I had never claimed him as my Lord. I didn't believe Satan was real. Like, I don't know. I had just gotten so deceived that I was full in on this lifestyle and these perspectives um, at this time. But no, it's not because I just had a perspective of, oh, you know, I'm going to encounter the devil because this is a sin and I shouldn't be doing that. No, I didn't believe psychedelics were a sin when I was doing them. I genuinely believed that they were good. They were healing. They were connecting me with God and with others. Like I genuinely believed that there was no frame of my mind that would have created a bad trip. It's not relative. This was a true experience. Um, I once heard a quote, I can't remember where it's from, but just because it happens in your mind doesn't mean it isn't real. So going back to psychedelics, it's mind manifesting. So many, like so many encounters we have with God, for example, are, are, you know, we hear his voice, like that unspoken voice in our head, or we have these dreams, like it all happens. It, I mean, not all, it's not all in our mind, but a lot of it is in our mind. And so these demons, they attack from within our mind too. And you, you know that every human knows that when you hear that, that negative voice or that self-deprecating voice or that voice of confusion, that it's literally demons speaking into your mind. That isn't God's voice. You know, like that's not God's voice. They're able to speak into us and they use our mind. And when we open our minds to them with portals like psychedelics, we're giving them free reign to enter. So I just encourage you guys to keep yourselves protected um, because these demons that you think are spirit guides, they're not here to heal you, but they're here to take you over. And you can't let them. You've got to keep your temple guarded. And the only way you can do that is the blood of Christ. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this show, I'd love to have you leave a review, share it with a friend, and even connect with me on other platforms. It's at Michaela Nikolenko on Instagram and TikTok. And we also have an at Raised and Redeemed Instagram account too. I look forward to connecting with you there. Until next time, stay well and God bless you.